Heavenly Father, once again, Lord, we're so thankful to be in your midst. We're so thankful for your love toward us, your long suffering, your mercy. We're so thankful that while we were yet sinners, you gave your son to die for us, that we may live with you. Lord, as we open up thy word, we ask that you would open up our hearts. We ask that you would pour your Holy Spirit upon us, that we may comprehend and understand what you have for us today. That it will draw us closer to thee, that we may be ready when you come in the clouds of glory. In Jesus' name, amen. <coughs> Cultivating faith. Cultivating faith. We as Seventh-day Adventists often wonder if we will be saved. We lack assurance and long to know our future in terms of eternal life. We work hard to be good enough and yet know that we come up short. We look within ourselves and we find little to encourage us as we walk through life. When we see the immense gap between the character of Jesus and ourselves, or when we read a text such as straight is the gate and narrow is the way with leadeth unto light, and there will be few that find it. Matthew seven fourteen. who doesn't have moments when we wonder if we're going to make it. To be, be, to be prepared for the end time, we must have the insurance of salvation in the present. We must understand justification by faith in order to face the future unafraid. And we can and should Live with the assurance of righteousness by faith. On October 18, 1898, Ellen G. Wright wrote in the Review and Herald, At nine o'clock I attended a meeting of the students in school chapel. About 80 were present, and the room was full. An hour was occupied in reading and in taking them about the necessity of their understanding of how to exercise faith, this is the science of the gospel. The scripture declares, without faith it is impossible to please God. The knowledge of what the scripture means when urging upon us the necessity of cultivating faith is more essential than any other knowledge that can be acquired. I'm going to read that again. The knowledge of what the scripture means when urging upon us the necessity of cultivating faith is more essential than any other knowledge that can be acquired. We suffer much trouble and grief because of our unbelief and our ignorance, ignorance of how to exercise faith. We must break through the clouds of unbelief we cannot have a healthy Christian experience. We cannot obey the gospel unto salvation until the science of faith is better understood. And until more faith is exercised, there can be no perfection of Christian character without that faith that works by love and purifies the soul. So what is faith? And how do we cultivate this faith that is required, that is required to be saved? Hebrews 11.1. 1. And I'm reading from the clear word. To have faith means to be confident of the things we hope for and to be certain of the things we can't see. 
Faith in God not only reaches into the future, but also into the past. By faith, we understand that God created the whole universe out of nothing. So the things we see were made out of things that didn't exist. Faith is depending upon the word of God only and expecting that word only to do what the word says. Justification by faith, then, is justification by depending upon the word of God only and expecting that word only to accomplish what the word said. Justification by faith is righteousness by faith. For justification is the being declared righteous. Romans 3 Romans 4, 3 to 5, for what does the scripture say? Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness. Now to him who works, the rages are not counted as great grace, but as debt. But to him who does not work, but believes on him who justifies the ungodly, his faith is accounted for righteousness. Faith comes by the word of God. Romans 10, 17. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Justification by faith then is justification that comes by hearing or by reading the word of God. Righteousness by faith is righteousness that comes by hearing or reading the word of God. God makes it simple for us. You know, we want to make it hard. John, John chapter 1, verses 1 to 3. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him, nothing was made that was made. Who are we talking about? We're talking about Jesus, right? And the word became flesh and dwelt among us on down in the chapter. This means that the word of God is self-fulfilling in creating all things. So when God was creating the world, Jesus spoke and it happened. Jesus said, let there be light. And there was light. This same Jesus spoke the word only and the sick were healed. The lepers were cleansed and the dead lived. He said, Lazarus, rise up. The dead rose up and lived because of the word that was spoken through Jesus. This same Jesus speaks the righteousness of God unto unto and upon all that believe. He spoke and it was. Romans 3, 23 to 25. For though. All have sinned and come short of the righteousness or glory of God, yet we are. Verse 24, justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God has set forth. Verse 25, to declare his righteousness, to declare his righteousness for the remissions of sins that are past through the forbearance of God. In creating all things in the beginning, God set forth Christ to declare the word which should call which should cause all things to exist. Christ did speak the word only and all things were. All things came into existence only by the word that God spoke. And in redemption, redemption, which is creation over again. He's redeeming us. God set forth Christ to declare the word of righteousness. And when Christ speaks the word only, it is so. His word, whether in creating or in redeeming, is the same. Christ's word is the same when he creates something or when he redeems us. He spake and it was. Before he spake, there was no world's. After he spoke, the worlds were there. Thus, the word of God spoken by Jesus Christ is able to cause that to exist, which has no existence before the word is spoken. 
and which, except for that word, never could have existed. Why is this so important? Why is it so important to know that when God speaks, it happens? You know, therefore, he can't lie. God can't lie because when he speaks, it happens. You know, when we speak, what happens? Nothing. You know, we, you know, nothing happens. But when God speaks, everything happens. Why is this? Why is that important? Because when he tells us we are redeemed, when he speaks, it happens. And we have evidence of that in the world that he's created. You know, that's why there's a, such an attack on the six day creation week. You know, even among Christians, oh, uh, maybe it was 6,000 years uh, because the science is not there to verify it. You know, who cares about the science? Uh, do, what do you believe in? You know, uh, until you can believe that God speaks and the world is created out of nothing, how can you accept that Christ redeemed you when he speaks? We must first understand who God is. And he has told us who he is through the Bible. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. That gives us faith to understand that when he says he redeems us by his word, if he can create the entire universe through his word, can he not redeem us by his word? Amen. In precisely the same way, I'm getting before myself, it is in our life. In our lives, there is no righteousness. In us, there is no righteousness for which righteousness can appear in our life. But God has set forth Christ to declare righteousness unto and upon us. Christ has spoken the word only. And in the darkest void of our life, there is righteousness to everyone who receive it. Where before the word was, is received, there was neither righteousness nor anything which could possibly produce righteousness. After the word is received, there is perfect righteousness and the very fountain from which it springs. The word of God received by faith, that is the word of God received by faith, expects that God's word is what it says. And depends upon God's word to do what it says. This produces righteousness in the person and in the life where there never was any before. Precisely as in the original creation, the word of God produced worlds where there never were any worlds before. He has spoken and it is so to everyone that believeth. That is to everyone that receiveth the word itself produces faith. Therefore, being justified or made righteous by faith, by expecting and depending on, depending upon the word of God only, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Romans 5.1 To him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness, Romans 4, 5. This is the only way that anybody in this world can ever become righteous. First, admit that he is ungodly. Then believe that God justifies, counts righteous, the ungodly, and he is righteous with the very righteousness of God. Everybody in this world is ungodly. You know, everybody in this world's messed up. We jacked up, <laughs> right? We are. Ungodly means unlike God. And it is written, Romans 3.23, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. The goodness, the character of God. Anybody, therefore, who will admit that he came short of being like God in anything confesses that he is ungodly, but the truth is that everybody and everything has come short of being like God, right? Psalms 14.3, they have all turned aside. They have together become corrupt. There is none who does good, no, not one. Romans 3.10, 
There is none righteous. No, not one. Then, as there is not one on earth who is not ungodly, and as God justifies the ungodly, this on God's part makes justification, righteousness, salvation, full, free, and sure to every soul on earth. And all that anybody needs to do to make it all sure to himself on his own part is to accept it, to believe that God does justify personally and individually him who is ungodly. This, strange as it may sound, the only qualification, the only qualification and the only preparation for justification is for a person to acknowledge that he is ungodly, to acknowledge that he ain't no good. That's your qualification. Then, having such qualification, having made such preparation, all that is required of him to obtain justification, full, free, and sure, is to believe that God justifies him, the ungodly one. You know, it is quite easy for us to believe that we're ungodly. You know, we know we, 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 know we ain't no good. And even to acknowledge it, but, but for us to believe that God justifies us, that's too much. And the sole reason why we cannot believe that God justifies us is that we are ungodly. We believe because we are so messed up and my sins are so bad, God can't save me. He can't make me righteous. Don't don't we believe that? Oh, I have to work to get it done. If only we could find some good thing in ourselves, or if only we can straighten up and do better, we might have some courage to hope that God would justify us. Yes, we would justify ourselves by works and then profess to believe in justification by faith. Hmm. But that would take away all grounds for justification. For if a man can find good in himself, he already has it, and he does not need it from anywhere else. If I can straighten up and do better all by myself, I don't need justification from anywhere else. It is therefore a contradiction in terms to say that I am so ungodly that I do not see how the Lord can justify me For if I am not ungodly, I do not need to be made righteous. I am righteous. For if I am not ungodly, I do not need to be made righteous. I'm already righteous. There is no halfway ground between godliness and ungodliness. But when a person sees himself, when he sees himself so ungodly, as to find there is no possible ground of hope for justification. It is just then that faith steps in. Indeed, it is only then that faith can possibly come in. For faith is dependent on the word of God only. So long as there is any dependence on myself, So long as there is any conceivable ground of hope for any dependence upon anything in or about myself, there can be no faith. There can be no faith. Since faith is dependent on the word only. On Jesus word only. Faith is dependent on God's word, not on our works. But when every conceivable ground of hope of any dependence on anything in or about myself is gone and is acknowledged to be gone, when everything that can be seen is against any hope of justification, then it is then throwing myself on the promise of God, upon the word of God, hoping against hope, 
that faith enters. And by faith, we find justification, full and free, all ungodly though I be. It is when I'm at my lowest point and I see that there's nothing good about me. No matter how how hard I try to be good, it ain't there. It isn't there. It is then when we can throw ourselves on the throne of God and accept what he has provided for us. It is then that we can accept this is trusting in God by faith. Because we can't see it. We don't understand it. We don't understand how the road was, was created. You know, the Bible tells us it was created in six days by his word. He spoke and it came into being. We just accept it. So can we not accept that Christ has declared us righteous? Redeeming us. He created the world and now he's redeeming us. He accepts for whatever it stands written. Romans 4, 5. But to him that does not work, but believe on him that justifies the ungodly, his faith is accounted for righteousness. Romans 3, 22. Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ, to all and on all who believe. Verse 25. Whom God has set forth to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are past. That is what it is to exercise faith. Just to believe what God has told us. Are you exercising faith? For understanding how to exercise faith, this is the science of the gospel. You know, we often want to work. Oh, well, what about sanctification? Well, I'm often told that Sabbath is a sign of sanctification. But what is the Sabbath? We're here resting, right? So the Sabbath is not about working, but yet the Sabbath is a sign of our sanctification, but the Sabbath is about resting. So when we come into the Sabbath, the reason the Sabbath is a sign of our sanctification because it, when you keep the Sabbath, it encompasses the whole Ten Commandments. But you know, in creating, when God created the earth, he created us on the sixth day, right? So the first day, what did we do? We rested. (laughs) We rested. We didn't go to work. God did everything for us. And then we enjoyed what God has done for us the first day. The first first day for us was the Sabbath. We rested. Don't you think in redeeming, what are we going to do? So the next step in redeeming sanctification process is not working, but resting. Oh, no, you didn't say that. (laughs) No, you didn't think about it. If in creation, the first day is resting, why wouldn't in redeeming the first day be resting in our lives? What does it mean to rest? Let me tell you something. When we rest on the Sabbath, we get the rest from lying, We get the rest from all our transgressions. (laughs) We get the rest from doing what is evil. Think about that. And then we start over. Now, because of what God has done for me, I love him so much that I want to follow him. Not because of works, but because of love. Love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and your neighbor as thyself. That's what the Bible wants us to know. That's what God wants us to know. And that he died for us and he's he's done it all. All we have to do is accept it and move on. All we have to do is accept it and move on. Heavenly Father, Lord, we're so thankful for your grace. We ask, though, Heavenly Father, as we grow in grace to thee, that you would cultivate our faith. And that we will understand that it's all about you and it's not about us. Help us to be more dependent upon thy word. Help us to expect what you have given to us and what you have done for us. That it may apply to our very lives, that we may love one another the way you have loved us. In Jesus' name, amen.